Hi all, I have an interesting neural network encounter to show you today. Scorpio neural network playing against Alistein. Alistein is based on the same concepts and algorithms that were introduced by DeepMind in the AlphaZero paper, but her code is original and contains an alternative implementation of those ideas. So Alistein, Ali is like a, a young cousin of Leela that can utilize the same networks produced by the LC0 project or other compatible networks. The Lelandstein network is also a novelty in that it introduces supervised learning into the TSEC competition. So Leela was unsupervised learning, so it's quite different. And also it's using Minimax rather than uh, Monte Carlo Tree Search. So uh, a really uh, different approach and so far in TSEC uh, this time round is doing exceptionally well. So let's have a look at one of these games. So Scorpio Neural Network playing white. The opening book E4 from Scorpio. Alice Thing plays E5. It, the opening book given carries on here. Bishop B5 G6. This is one of my favorite lines in Blitz recently or Bullet. It's uh, I believe the Steinitz uh, not the Steinitz. It's the Smyslov variation at this early Fincetto. Bishop G7, C3, A6, Bishop E4, D6, D4, Bishop D7, unpinning the knight, getting ready for D5. Rook uh, E1, Knight G E7, and this is the end of the book. D takes E5, and now Alistine does keep uh, the position quite interesting by playing knight takes e5. Uh, there's a high level grandmaster game in this position, uh, which showed d takes e5. Now technically white can play a move like queen e2 with a small advantage. In uh, the game Benjamin, Joel Benjamin against Nigel Short in Hastings 987, there was bishop e3. You can see in this structure black uh, is pretty uh, uncomfortable actually. It is a symmetrical pawn structure but white does seem to have a nagging edge and the game was actually a quick draw uh, it seems here uh, after bishop e6, a5, rook ad1 they actually agreed a draw not too much going on. So uh, Alistine though plays knight takes e5. It keeps the position um, you could argue more interesting in terms of the pawn structure after knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, this pawn structure is not symmetrical. And black might later be able to put pressure on the e file and the e pawn in general. But white, of course, has corresponding pressure down the d file. So a non symmetrical pawn structure. Bishop b3, knight c6, knight d2, black castles, knight f3, bishop f6, bishop h6, rookie 8. Queen d2, bishop e6. And here, perhaps white played something pretty controversial, h3. It allows black to double white's pawns, which might be an issue in end games. Might be. This allowing uh, the doubling of pawns. An alternative, for example, bishop takes e6, should leave white with uh, a small edge. For example, like this. Uh, white should be absolutely fine. But uh, yeah, it's like um, after h3, bishop takes b3, there could be a downside of these double pawns in end games later. We have bishop g7, rook ad1. Uh, here, taking on g7 doesn't seem to do too much. Black can recapture and play queen e7. Uh, but it's uh, far from uh, clear if. If black can really get an advantage from here, yeah, this this seems to be uh, quite a bind actually on d5. So white technically has a small edge there. Uh, so here anyway, uh, rook a d1, rook e6. This is an interesting move, preparing to put more pressure on e4. Rook e2, queen d7. Now white took on g7, king takes rook f1. Or rather, rook d f1, rook a e8. 
So the dynamics seem to be uh, paying off for black, some pressure on the E file at least, non symmetrical pawn structure. Rook F E one H six Rook E three Rook C E seven Rook six E seven pardon me. B four knight e5 so not minding swapping things off getting this position now queen d4 so threatening f4 uh, potentially so the king unpins himself uh, or unpins the rook f3 queen e7 so yes this seems to be um, at least black yeah has some prospects here uh, rook 3 e2 and now d5 in fact, this is actually quite a serious concern now. Can black get into a more simplified endgame from this position where these double pawns could be a real issue? We have king f1, queen g5, and the queen goes to a7 here. Uh, it is a tricky position now. If e takes d5, then rook takes e2 rook takes and then g2 drops here followed by h3 and black should be having an advantage there so it's getting tricky this queen excursion uh strange you might say d takes e4 queen takes okay but if we look these two could actually hold up these three potentially because they are double pawns so black actually is doing very well now after e takes there's the threat of chatmate if the rook leaves uh, g2 here we have queen takes f3 just to put that on the board if rook takes e5 there's queen takes g2 mate so queen takes f3 but now black simply plays rook takes e2 and queen b5 pinning the rook getting ready for a king and pawn ending it seems as though uh, this is big trouble now because these two pawns can handle uh, the majority of pawns. So black basically has got a three to two pawn majority coming up in king and pawn endings. King e1 and the king and pawn ending is entered into in style with king f8 here not actually giving the king uh, a free king takes e2. So here king f8, queen takes, king takes, king e2. King d7, King d3, f5. It's clear that black has a potential pass pawn here, and white's only a non looker in this endgame. After King e3, King d6, King f4, King e6, h4, King f6. Black is building up the pass pawn potential now on this side of the board. So creating a pass pawn. And this is a big problem for white. White's actually not able to do too much now. Uh, after c4 king f5 yeah c5 is played there's no real point playing b5 this pawn could handle both of those they're just doubled so uh, here now it's a zugzwang after king g5 uh, making way for black's f pawn uh, this is desperate and the f pawn is just winning the game here so uh a nice win here with the black pieces after queen takes b2 white resigned so simple and strong play a key feature of this game it veered from uh, some grandmaster game examples by playing knight takes e5 black kept a more dynamic pawn structure uh, by doubling the pawns it helped guarantee good end games especially king and pawn end games as we saw uh, so clear play with the black pieces logical effective and uh yeah quite instructive so ali steam with the black pieces able to beat scorpion neural network if you enjoyed this game uh please check out these bitly links so bitly chess world to play me or other youtubers leela videos and i'll probably create soon an ali steam uh playlist as well so if you want to check Lila videos, Lila Chess. And uh, okay, let's check out some other games of Alice theme. This is the new kid on the block. Okay, thanks very much.